Welcome to Miami. Here we are at the Biohacking Congress in Miami with over 30 different speakers and exhibitors. And today I have the honor of sitting down with Dr. Nathan Bryan. And we are so excited to talk about nitric oxide. And I actually sat and listened to his lecture yesterday. You guys, I am amazed and today I want everybody here to listen and understand how amazing this is to optimize everyone's wellness. So, and by the way, I'm Sandy Cruz of Sandy K Nutrition Health and Lifestyle Queen podcast. I guess I should introduce myself as well. And here is Dr. Nathan Bryan. Welcome. Sandy, thank you so much for having me. I am so happy to meet you. I didn't get to meet you the last time. And please tell us what you've done, what you do, because there's just so much that you've done. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously like most careers, it's been a journey, right? And yeah. so, um, you know, I've been interested in science and medicine since days in high school, and I went and got a degree in biochemistry from the University of Texas. Um, and then I realized I had to further my education because the job market with a bachelor's degree in biochemistry wasn't that promising. Mm. So I got a PhD in molecular and cellular physiology from LSU School of Medicine, and then did a fellowship in Boston, but really my entire really education and training has been on nitric oxide. So I spent more than 20 years now in studying nitric oxide. We've answered a lot of fundamental questions, made a lot of discoveries, and now we have product technology that restores nitric oxide in all of humans. Okay, so first things first, we need to explain what is nitric oxide? What does it do in the body? Yeah. Why is it so important? Well, it's a gas. It's a gas that's produced in the lining of the blood vessels. It's produced by our immune cells. It's produced in basically every cell in the body, but it's a signaling molecule. So it tells individual cells what to do. Um, it regulates blood pressure, blood flow. It's a neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. It's how our immune system fights off invading pathogens from viruses and bacteria. Uh, so when you lose the ability to make nitric oxide, a lot of things go wrong. You become susceptible to viral infections, bacterial infections. You develop high blood pressure develop diabetes, you develop um, sexual dysfunction, uh, mild cognitive disorders. So every single chronic disease is characterized by decreased blood flow. And that's secondary to the loss of nitric oxide. So everything we know about chronic disease, as well as living optimally and optimal health, it's centered around nitric oxide. So it's the foundation for every single thing we know about human health and disease. And you've done many studies to prove this, correct? I have several, over 100 scientific publications on nitric oxide. In fact, there's probably 180,000, 190,000 scientific papers on nitric oxide. So we've contributed uh, a lot of discoveries to the field, and uh, we now have a pretty good understanding of how the human body makes nitric oxide, what goes wrong in people that can't make it, and now we know how to fix that. Okay, so let's begin with that because Everybody knows at midlife, things start That's to right. kind of go a little bit haywire. So why, why does that happen? So we make it okay up until when, what age? Well, it's a progression, okay. right? So it's similar to growth hormones. So we, we probably peak out or, or maximize production in our late teens, early 20s, and then there's about a 10 to 12% decline in what we call endothelial function per decade. So what that tells us is by the time you're 40 years old, you only have about 50% of the nitric oxide you had when you were younger. Wow. And so really the age of 40 is when people start to feel the effects of aging, typically. Yes. So we don't perform as well as we did in the bedroom, the boardroom, or on the athletic field. In True. 50% of the men over the age of 40 report some degree of, or some degree of erectile dysfunction. So now we understand that's a blood flow problem. Yes. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that way. So now we know how to prevent that age-related decline in nitric oxide production which translates into the prevention of chronic disease. Okay, so around 40, things can start to go on a decline. How about if we really eat well? Because my understanding is we get a lot of it from eating greens yeah. and you know eating whole real foods, exercising. What if we do all of that? Well, you know, we've published a lot of studies showing that that's not always sufficient. So to your point, we get a source of nitric oxide from the diet, and that yeah. primarily comes in the form of nitrate that's found in green leafy vegetables. We published a study in 2015 showing that the variability in the nitrate content of many vegetables across many different regions of the U.S. 
can vary by as much as 50 to 100 fold. Yeah. So just because you're eating your green leafy vegetables doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get enough nitrate to generate microcoxate. So that's number one, we're not getting enough nitrate from our diet. Number two, we require the bacteria that live in and on our body to metabolize nitrate into nitric oxide. And so with 200 million Americans using mouthwash every day, it kills the oral microbiome, so we become nitric oxide deficient. There are over 200 million prescriptions written for antacids every year that shuts down nitric oxide production. So all of these things that people are doing, insufficient nitrate ingestion, use of mouthwash, use of antibiotics, exposure to fluoride in your toothpaste or water, and in acids all shut down nitric oxide production. So even if you're eating the right foods, giving moderate physical exercise, these simple things disrupt nitric oxide production. Yeah, that makes sense. And it can disrupt other things too in the body, right? So this makes a lot of sense. Now, okay, I know that some people are gonna ask this, nitrate, nitrates okay you know how they talk about yeah. nitrates being really really bad added to our foods right. like hot dogs and cold cuts so what's the difference there is no difference okay in yeah, fact, yeah it's, it's, it's a myth that's been perpetuated in the scientific literature for more than 70 years now okay so if so the the early observations were that in the nutritional you know, epidemiologist showed okay if you eat you know cured and processed meats, right? There's a higher incidence of certain types of cancers. So that's an association, but it's not causation. And they tried to devise a biologically plausible mechanism to account for that association. They thought, well, maybe nitrates and nitrites cause nitrosamines and that causes increased risk of cancer. But if that were the case, then vegetarians would have 10 times higher cancer rates than meat eaters. Right. Because 80% of the nitrate, nitrite, exposure we get from our diet comes from eating green leafy vegetables. And we know it's just the opposite. So vegetarians, vegans, people with a plant-based diet have lower incidence of cancer. In fact, we published in 2009 that nitrite nitrate can actually protect from certain forms of cancer and certainly prevents the metastasis of the disease. So that, that myth has been debunked now for the past probably 20 years. Um, but you know, you still see the commercials for nitrate, nitrite-free lunch meat or hot dogs. Yes. And so you pay probably two to three bucks more a pound for that. And we published on this that the organically cured or no nitrite added meats have about two to three times higher nitrite than the ones where it's added. Really? So yeah, it's it's really it's misconception. It's a it's it's consumer deception. Because the meat companies aren't adding nitrite, they're adding celery powder, they're putting a yes. starter culture of bacteria on it. Yes. So the bacteria reduce the nitrate to nitrite, so you're get, still getting the curing effect, but they can get away with no nitrite added because they're not adding a nitrite salt. Oh. But at the same time, it's still a cured product. I mean, it has to be a cured product because right. if not, you would get foodborne illness, you'd get botulism, you'd get salmonella, all these bacteria. So nitrite is absolutely essential for food safety to prevent food spoilage and to preserve the shelf life of these ready-to-eat meats. Okay, but I, I do have to say, it's not like we're going out and saying, go eat pounds and pounds no. of cured meats and hot dogs, because <laughs> you know, we still want to encourage a whole real foods diet, right. right? So, okay, now you mentioned a couple of the effects, your arteries, um, blood flow, um, I think you also talked about type 2 diabetes that's right. in your talk and that listen that's that's a huge issue so maybe let's talk a little bit about how nitric oxide can relate to this sure well as I mentioned nitric oxide is a signaling molecule yes. so it not just signals the blood vessels to dilate and expand and improve oxygen delivery but it's part of the insulin signaling pathway so when you eat a high carbohydrate meal, or any meal for that matter, we have to secrete insulin from the pancreas. That insulin then binds to the insulin receptors, and then we do a series of signaling mechanisms. We improve glucose uptake. So we clear glucose from the circulation, bring it into the cell, and we use it as an energy substrate right. that we store. So nitric oxide is required for that to happen. So when people with insulin resistant type two diabetes, they're secreting insulin, and the insulin binds to the insulin receptor, but you still develop the high sugar, the hyperglycemia. And the reason for that is because if the cell can't make nitric oxide, you can't improve glucose uptake. 
So then that tells the body there's a feedback saying, hey, I need to secrete more insulin because I'm not clearing the glucose from the circulation. Yes. Then you develop hyperinsulinemia, hyperglycemia, and that's the inflammatory cascade that causes a lot of vascular damage to diabetics. So if we simply restore the production of nitric oxide, then we complete the insulin signaling pathway and you overcome metabolic disease. Okay, so what other ways can we, I know infrared sauna is a great, uh, I, I do it, I actually built a therapy room in yeah. our home instead of a gym. <laughs> we did a therapy room, so I have red light therapy, I have uh, dry, uh, far infrared sauna. So talk to me about what if you're one of these people that has some sort of a disease or something like Barrett's esophagus. They have to live on a proton pump inhibitor. What then? What if they have to take these drugs? Then there's got to be something that they can do to offset that lower production of nitric oxide. Well, I mean, I encourage people to talk to their physician to wean off drugs, because the human yes. body is never designed to be exposed to a drug for the rest of their life. Yeah. So is. there's a reason you have Barrett's esophagus, there's a reason you have gastric esophagus. Totally. So we have to get to the root cause of it. But let's just say that you have to take the... Uh, so we've developed technology that basically generates nitric oxide for you. So if your body can't make nitric oxide, we do it for you. But we also understand the enzymology to the extent that we can improve the body's ability to make nitric oxide. So that's kind of been our contributions, is we have product technology that actually generates and liberates nitric oxide gas. We can quantify it, we can verify it, so any product that we bring to market, we can demonstrate it generates nitric oxide. That's amazing. Okay. So, and I've seen, you can also do that with your skin. Yeah. Okay, I tried it. And I noticed, so I just tried a little bit of the serum on my hand, and all of a sudden my hand just, it's like it came to life. Like it right. was like pink. And so talk to, because of course, anything that's, you know, aging better for my skin, as well as from internal, right. I'm, I am all about inside out. So, you know, talk to us about all of that. Well, as I mentioned earlier, every single chronic disease is characterized by decreased blood flow to yes. that organ. Yes. So the skin is an organ, right? And so if your skin doesn't get sufficient blood supply and oxygen or nutrient delivery to those individual cells, then the skin fails. Well, what does failing skin look like? Well, you lose collagen, you lose hydration, fine lines and wrinkles appear, you get acne, you get inflammation, dermatitis. Yeah. So once we figured out how to make nitric oxide, we put this in the form of a serum that you could apply topically. Because similar to, to your approach, Skin is an outside reflection of internal health. So we have to hit it from both sides. So we use our lozenge to open up the microcirculation internally, and then we apply our serum topically, and it opens up the capillaries, dilates the blood vessels, and then floods those cells with oxygen and nutrients. So we're seeing improvement in collagen deposition, we see improvement in hydration, fine lines and wrinkles disappear, uh, a lot of inflammation, inflammatory skin disease, a complete resolution uh, and you can actually see the product working so as you mentioned yes. it's a dual chamber you take one pump from each side you mix it together it generates nitric oxide gas and you can see the skin turn pink right before your eyes yes so you don't have to guess if this product is working you can actually see it working it's amazing right before your eyes. it's amazing so somebody like myself so I'm gonna be 53 years old in January and for me it's all about what can I do I mean we're not gonna not gonna look like I'm 30 anymore but I just want to age gracefully sure. so how long before I mean you you have to use it forever the skin <clears throat> well I think you know we you're live, my age yeah anyway. we, we live in a very toxic world and things we're exposed to in the outside environment as well as the foods we're exposed to you know it shuts to, everything we're doing is inhibiting nitric oxide production yeah so we need a daily supplement or daily dose of nitric oxide so because nothing's more important than blood flow and oxygen delivery. Without that, every single organ, tissue, and cell of the body fails. And that's really the onset and progression of chronic disease. So we've got you know, four published clinical trials on the serum that we find really transformational results within 30 days. Oh, yes. Using it once in the morning, once in the evening, and 30 days later you see I mean, remarkable effects. I'll come back and tell you. <laughs> That's right. Because <laughs> I did get my serum for sure. I, okay, can you overdo it on the lozenges? Can Because I know that I, I also have the lozenges, which I'm going to try. And 
I just want to know, like, because I do eat green green yeah. beans. I do exercise regularly. I do infrared sauna. I do red light therapy. I, you know, I do all these things. So can I overdo it? Yeah, you can. I mean, like, if you drink too much water, you can overhydrate cells. True. So dose dictates the poison. So when we look at nitric oxide, there are two signs of toxicity. One is hypotension. So if you take too much, it'll drop your blood pressure. Okay. And then two is uh, methemoglobinemia. So you oxidize the iron in your red blood cells, so you limit the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. So that's the cyanosis. But that's you know your blood pressure will drop long before you develop any clinical signs of methemoglobinemia. Okay. So, but if you take as indicated, look, you would have to take probably the whole bottle to see an unsafe drop in blood pressure. But you know, one to two. You know, we have some people that take four to five a day, uh, and there's wow. no no unsafe drop in blood pressure. So we feel very good about the safety concerns around that. In fact, we have drugs now in phase three clinical trials that are extremely safe, that are higher concentrations or higher dosing than our uh, over-the-counter lozenge uh, with a very good safety profile. Okay, and everyone's gonna ask about this because when you're a midlife woman, you're wondering, will a positive causative factor like weight loss come into play? if I started taking nitric oxide? Well, you know, we don't have any clinical data on weight loss. Okay. But what I tell people, look, it's part of the metabolic pathway. Yes, it is. So you have to be able to make nitric oxide. Number one, it'll improve blood flow and circulation and improve you know, the metabolic profile. We see a reduction in triglycerides. We see a re reduction in uh, fasting glucose levels. So once you improve glucose uptake and activation of, you know, a lot of these pathways like AMP kinase, these longevity, pathways, you know, nitric oxide is what's responsible for activating those. Okay, well that's, nothing is a quick fix, and no, I always right. say that, you know, when I work with clients, I'm always like, listen, if you want to lose weight, let's first look at what's going on here, and sometimes weight loss just happens, that's right? right, once you kind of rebalance what's going on on this side. So, you know, who can use this? Can it be anyone? Like, are there any contraindications at all? Yeah, we've been doing this for more than 20 years. We've had product on the market now for more than a decade. And then we, have, we, found, we really haven't found a single person that would not benefit from nitric oxide. So whether you're someone who's sick and wants to get well, nitric oxide is critically important. If you're someone like us who's really in tune with our body, we're healthy, we just want to optimize and not get sick, nitric yes. oxide's for that person. Because it's clearly shown that the loss of nitric oxide is the earliest event in the onset and progression of chronic disease. So your body cannot and will not heal without nitric oxide. So we haven't found any contraindications or any single person that wouldn't benefit from nitric oxide at the right dose at the right time. Okay. And then just to uh, get to this one point, because I think it's an important one. I've heard that if you're recovering from surgery or you have some scars, you can actually use that serum on the scar to help heal a little bit quicker. Isn't that right? No, that's right. So we have some clinical data showing the antimicrobial effects, bacterial effects of that. And so we've got a number of clinics and number of docs that are using it on surgical sites. Wow. So whether, and so there's still, I mean, in some parts of the U.S., a 20% readmission for surgical site infections. The beauty of nitric oxide is it's antibacterial, so the doses that we liberate through the serum kill bacteria, they kill viruses, and they restore blood flow to that site. So when you have an incision, there's very little blood flow, right? So you get fibrotic tissue and scar. So if you can apply the serum immediately upon, you know, the, the sutures or stitching up, you basically sterilize that surgical site yeah. and you restore blood flow to that. So you get very good scar remediation and very few surgical site infections. That's just amazing. Okay, I think I, I did have a couple of other questions. So I want to summarize first. Yeah. So maybe, touch on all of the different areas that it can really have a positive effect, like your arteries. You, you mentioned cholesterol, you mentioned triglycerides. What about LDL? Like, does it have any effect on, is it all cholesterol? Just to give you a better No, balance, not really. Or? I mean, the standard lipid panel really means nothing in terms of assessing cardiovascular risk. Yes. Cholesterol does not cause heart disease. Right. So what we're looking at is- You heard it from a doctor here, <laughs> folks. <laughs> and LDL, HDL really means nothing in terms of assessing cardiovascular yep. risk. What we look at 
are they oxidized lipoproteins? Yes, and oxidized the, LDL, right? It's, oxi it's oxidation, inflammation, and immune dysfunction. Yes. That's what's responsible for cardiovascular disease. So we know nitric oxide prevents oxidative stress, prevents inflammation, and prevents the immune dysfunction yeah. that occurs. So we really don't look at cholesterol and, and LDL and HDL. We look at kind of an advanced lipid panel that gives you lipoprotein particle size, number, and the number of oxidized particles. But getting back to your question, nitric oxide is really the platform for optimal health. So what does it do? It regulates blood flow and blood pressure. It prevents the inflammation, oxidative stress, and immune dysfunction. It, it's actually the molecule that tells our own stem cells to mobilize and differentiate. So now, you know, the aging process is we continually wear ourselves out every day. But aging is just the inability to replace new cells that work properly. Mm -hmm. And that's the function of stem cells. So the older we get, the less nitric oxide we make, so there's less signal to tell our own stem cells to replace and repair dysfunctional cells. So when we have sufficient nitric oxide, now we can repair and regenerate, and we basically slow down the aging process. So it's probably the number one biohack one can do. It's not, it's not an end-all, be-all, cure-all, but anything you do thereafter is gonna have better results. Whether it's you take our lozenge, you get an infrared sauna, you're gonna get better effects from the light. Yes. Day. Uh, if you're doing some type of meditation or, you know, oxygen therapy, hyperbaric, you take the nitric oxide, you open up the small blood vessels, then everything you do is going to be better. Mm -hmm. If you're taking supplements, whether it's a corella, spirulina, or other nutrients, you take our nitric oxide, open up the microcirculation, and then now you're going to get better delivery of anything you take thereafter. Right. Because everything kind of affects, like the blood flow is... It's where it's at. Is, it's is the cardiovascular key. system. Yeah. Yes. Because I've, I've actually taken peptide bioregulators for blood vessel, right? Because blood vessels the delivery system for everything. So That's right. I love it. Okay. Um, let us know, where can we find you both on the skin side as well as on the, I guess, the lozenge, right? right? How can we get this? Well, I send people first to my educational website because my, my intent is to just bring about awareness and education on nitric oxide, and I encourage people to do your own research, but there's a lot of noise out there. Right? Okay. So I have an educational website, drnathansbryan.com. There's a six-minute video on there. We do monthly blogs, try to provide some timely, practical information. Uh, our products, if you're interested in our products, our nutritional products are through Bryan Nitroceuticals, and that's at no2u.com. Uh, the skincare is Numa Nitric Oxide, that translates into the breath of life, so we can actually breathe I like this nitric that. oxide molecule. Uh, and that's at n101.com. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Dr. Nathan S. Bryan. We have a drug company where we have nitric oxide based therapeutics, and we have a number of drug candidates in clinical trials now through the FDA. And that's at nitricoxideinnovations.com. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much, and we will hopefully hear way more about this from Dr. Nathan Bryan. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Sandy.